Okay, so this is a tutorial on the muscles of the gluteal region and the muscles of the thigh. So I'm going to cover quite a lot of muscles here, but I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail because I've done that in some other individual tutorials. So the gluteal region is this region here between the iliac crest and the gluteal fold, so the folds of the buttock. So it's, it's helpful to think of the gluteal region in terms of deep and superficial muscles. So the deep muscles are small little muscles and are mainly lateral rotators of the hip. And then you've got the large powerful superficial group which you can see here, which are mainly extensors and abductors, abductors of the hip, the femur at the hip. So you've got three muscles in the superficial region. You've got this muscle here which is the gluteus maximus and this muscle is um, innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve. Next you've got the gluteus medius which lies just underneath. So you can see this fan shaped muscle here and this abducts the femur. And you've got the minimus which lies underneath and that is um, also an abductor so it works together with the gluteus medius. So those are the three um, gluteus muscles, gluteus maximus, medius and minimus. And then you've got this muscle here, the tensor fasciae latae muscle. So this muscle inserts onto this band of fascia, the iliotibial tract. And what this muscle does is it stabilizes the knee in extension. So that's the tensor fasciae latae muscle. So you can see the spelling here. So those are the four muscles of the superficial group in the gluteal region. And next you've got these, you can see these muscles underneath, which are the muscles of the deep layer. And these are mainly lateral rotators of the, of the femur. So I'm just going to talk you through these muscles from superior to inferior. The top muscle here is the piriformis muscle. And this muscle originates on the sacrum. So if I just fade away the other muscles, you can see where it originates. So you can see it, it's on this anterolateral surface of the sacrum and it inserts onto the femur, so it laterally rotates the femur. So an important thing I want to point out is um, the greater sciatic foramen. So if you look at this side, you've got the greater sciatic notch in the pelvis and you've got this little bump here which is the ischial spine of the pelvic bone. So you've got a ligament which runs from the ischial spine to the sacrum, and that's called the sacrospinous ligament. So above the sacrospinous ligament, you've got the greater sciatic foramen. And you've also got another ligament which lies posteriorly to the sacrospinous ligament, called the sacrotuberous ligament, which is oriented more vertically. So the greater sciatic foramen is this space between the greater sciatic notch and the sacrospinous and sacrotuberous ligaments. So you can see that here. So I'll just rotate the model over and show a bit more clearly here. So this is the sacrotuberous ligament, sorry, the sacrospinous ligament running horizontally from the ischial spine to the sacrum, and you've got the sacrotuberous ligament which runs vertically from the ischial tuberosity to the sacrum. So that's what's called the sacrotuberous, so referring to the ischial tuberosity, sacrotuberous. So the reason I mentioned this is that the piriformis runs through the, this greater sciatic foramen and it got, it's got, there's two little gaps above and below the piriformis. So above the piriformis you've got some vessels and nerves that pass through and below the piriformis you've got vessels and nerves that pass through. So importantly below the piriformis you get the sciatic nerve and above you get the superior gluteal nerve and vessels. So you can see the sciatic nerve emerging below the piriformis in the greater sciatic foramen. So it's above the uh, sacrospinous ligament but below the piriformis and you've got the superior gluteal nerve coming above the piriformis. So just below the piriformis muscle you've got this muscle called the superior um, gemellus muscle, so, or the, sorry the gemellus superior and you've got the gemellus inferior below here but in between you've got this muscle called the obturator internus muscle. So the obturator internus muscle 
actually sits. Um, just get rid of these muscles and ligament. So this is the obturator internus muscle, which sits on the medial surface of the obturator membrane. So I've just isolated this muscle so you can take a look at it. So this is the obturator foramen and you've got a membrane which covers it. On the So on the lateral surface, on the external surface, you've got a muscle called the obturator externus which I'll talk about shortly. Um, but this muscle is the obturator internus because it lies on the medial surface or the internal surface. So you can see it originating here and it bends 90 degrees round and then comes to insert on the femur at the greater trochanter. So that's the obturator internus muscle, you can see that 90 degree bend and its origin on the obturator membrane on the medial surface. So you've got the piriformis, then you've got the superior gemellus, the gemellus superior, sorry, um, the obturator internus, and then the gemellus inferior underneath the obturator internus. So just inferior to the gemellus inferior, you've got this quadrangular shaped muscle. So this is called the quadratus femoris muscle. And this again externally rotates, laterally rotates the femur. All these muscles laterally rotate the femur, but um, these four muscles actually can extend the hip at the um, extend the femur at the hip joint as well as laterally rotating, but the quadratus femoris only laterally rotates. So the piriformis and this uh, gemellus superior mus muscle um, are innervated by the sorry the um, superior the gemellus superior and the obturator internus muscle are innervated by the nerve to the obturator internus, and then the quadratus femoris and the inferior gemellus um, are innervated by the nerve to the quadratus femoris. The piriformis is innervated by uh, branches from S1 and S2. So those are the muscles of the gluteal region. So just remember they're split into deep and superficial layers. So next I'm going to talk about the muscles of the thigh region. So the thigh can be split into three compartments. You've got an anterior compartment, a posterior compartment and a medial compartment which are separated by intermuscular septa. So the anterior compartment is mainly innervated by the femoral nerve, the medial com sorry is only innervated by the femoral nerve, the medial compartment is mainly innervated by the obturator nerve, and the posterior compartment, the hamstrings, are innervated by the sciatic nerve, or branches of the sciatic nerve. So the anterior compartment consists of the quadriceps muscle, which consists itself of four different muscles as the name suggests, the sartorius, and then the terminal ends of the iliopsoas muscle. So let's just take a look at the iliopsoas muscle. So the iliopsoas muscle makes up part of the posterior abdominal wall. So I'll just remove the muscles and we can take a look at them. So you can see that the, it consists of two muscles. You've got the psoas major and the iliacus. So the iliacus muscle, you can see it sitting here in the um, iliac fossa and you can see the psoas major um, originating on the vertebral bodies here and then it winds down to form this common insertion point on the femur so this muscle has two actions two origins so you've got the psoas major originating up here and you've got the iliacus muscle originating in the iliac fossa and this these muscles collectively are known as the iliopsoas mu muscle so what this does is it flexes the femur at the hip joint. So as you can see, these ter the terminal ends of this muscle are part of the anterior compartment of the thigh. So this psoas major muscle is innervated by the anterior rami of L1, 2 and 3. And the iliacus muscle is innervated by the femoral nerve along with the other muscles of the anterior compartment. So I'll just take a look at the rest of the muscles. So we'll start off with this muscle here. This is the rectus femoris muscle. So the quadriceps muscle consists of four muscles as the name suggests. You've got the rectus femoris and then you've got the three vastus muscles. 
So you've got the vastus medialis, which is this teardrop shaped muscle on the medial side. You've got the vastus lateralis, which is this muscle sitting laterally. And you've got the vastus intermedius, which lies underneath this muscle here, the rectus femoris muscle. So these four muscles converge at this common insertion point onto the patella bone via the quadriceps tendon and then the patella attaches to the tibial tu tuberosity via the patella ligament. So the rectus femoris muscle is interesting because it attaches to the pelvic bone so it acts also as a hip flexor whereas the vastus muscles originate on the femur so they only extend the knee. So if we just take a look at these muscles in isolation, so you can see this muscle, the rectus femoris, it inserts onto the an sorry, originates on the anterior inferior iliac spine, and there's also another head which isn't shown here, which is reflected back, inserting superiorly to the acetabular fossa. So it originates on the pelvic bone, which allows it to act as a hip flexor. So removing the vast uh, the, the rectus femoris, looking underneath, you can see this muscle here, the vastus intermedius. So this lies between the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis. So you can see these muscles have an origin on the on the femur, and they insert onto the patella tendon via this common quadriceps tendon. Sorry, they insert onto the patella via this common quadriceps tendon. So they act to extend the leg at the knee joint. So the quadriceps are innervated by the femoral nerve. So next we've got this muscle which is the last muscle of the anterior compartment. It, the, it's called the sartorius and it also originates on the pelvis and it winds round descending along the thigh obliquely to insert on the medial surface of the proximal tibia. So that's the sartorius muscle. So I've just isolated it again and you can see its origin here on the anterior superior iliac spine and it winds down like this, like a band, onto the medial surface of the proximal tibia. And this again is invaded by the femoral nerve because it's in the anterior compartment of the thigh. So because this muscle originates on the pelvis, it also acts as a hip flexor. And it also flexes the leg at the knee joint. So unlike the quadriceps which extend, this flexes the leg at the knee joint and also flexes the hip joint.